Hi, welcome back to the Sean Trey Show. This is one of my solos because I had some guests planned and everyone canceled. <laughs> what can you do? But it's okay because I think it's something that I want to have happen more often where I'm sitting here just talking to you uh, directly talking to you about some thoughts and things that I was feeling at that time. One of the things that I said before that I really want to start working on on this podcast is creating something that um, my daughter, 30 years down the road, 40 years down the road, can look back on, listen to, watch, and get something from. And maybe it's the same information that I wish I could put out for a person 30 years ago. Sean, way back when. Because I, I, I kind of come back around, and I don't know if people know this, but for much of my life, I've worked in media, but I've also been an educator. I've taught. I've taught kids, and I still teach children. I have my own business that I do, but one of the ways I pay for my extra graduate school is that I still have a side hustle of teaching English to children. And I love it. I love it. I love being able to teach kids for life. There was a school I taught at a long time ago, and they had the motto, education not for, for, for books and stuff, but for life. And, and I love that because so much of, of my life was shaped by people that were great educators in, in my world. You know, one of them was, I had a teacher named Mr. Flugrad. And Mr. Flugrad was one of the first people that made learning fun for me, made it interesting. Uh, I don't remember many of his lessons, but I remember that class and that school, the two years that I studied with him, uh, were a joy, were an absolute blessing, and were some of the most fun years of my life. Also, later on, I had great teachers in high school. I had Miss McChesney. She was a history professor, and she was the exact reason that I actually became a history major. Didn't realize that there weren't a ton of job prospects outside of being a history teacher, but I love to learn. I love to read and I love some of the skills that she taught me in her class. And, and I carried that with me throughout my entire life. We can have this impact on people and that's something that I love. But I also love one of the lessons that I uh, received today and one of the lessons that I am learning constantly in my own life. And the idea of pivoting. Sometimes plans change. We might have had a direction that we are working towards in our life. You might have had this, this grand scheme laid out in front of you, this idea, this vision that you wanted to accomplish. And then life happens. One of, the, one of the, my favorite stories growing up and an absolute hero of mine was Terry Fox. I remember when I was younger, my dad would always share with me about Terry Fox. And Terry Fox died before I was born. But his, his, his impact was still felt in the area that I was living. And my parents had been living in Canada before I was born. And they were very, very tied to the story of Terry Fox. And the story of Terry Fox was extremely uh, inspiring to them. Who is Terry Fox? For people who don't know, Terry Fox was a athlete, a uh, young guy who was picture of health, strong young man. And he got cancer, cancer in his leg. And for a while, it was really devastating for him. He felt shocked. He felt overwhelmed. He lost his leg. And then he went through chemo and uh, came out the other side, not sure. So what did Terry Fox do? He decided that he was going to keep running. He was going to raise money to help people learn more about cancer. And he was going to raise awareness by running across Canada. Now, if you watch the movie Forrest Gump, one of Forrest's characters where he's running across the U.S. is modeled, I believe, after Terry Fox. And yet Terry Fox had only one leg. He had a prosthetic leg, and they weren't as nice as the prosthetics legs we have now. It was not comfortable. It did not fit well. It was painful to wear, and yet he ran. He ran. Why? Because he had the ability to. 
uh, one of the things that I love is I, I've gotten heavily into Stoicism, and I absolutely love uh, some of the books written by Ryan Holiday, and uh, there are other great authors. But one of the the basic tenets of Stoicism is an idea of what are the things I control, what are the things I can control, I should say, and what are the things that I cannot control, and then knowing the difference between the two this might sound familiar for many people because it's similar to the serenity prayer that is used by AA and by many people out there to kind of look at their ability to control things in their life and what they can't. And then the wisdom to know the difference. So what could Terry Fox control? He couldn't control his diagnosis. He couldn't control how his body responded to the treatments. He couldn't control the fact that he was now dealing with something very challenging, a major setback in his life. But what could he control? Well, Terry could control how he reacted, what he was going to do with the time given to him. And he made something of it. Earlier, we don't know what, we do know what time about Terry Fox before he got cancer, but that's not what people talk about. What people talk about is what Terry Fox did after he had cancer, in the short time that he had cancer, before he passed. Now, Terry Fox ran across Canada, and then he turned around and came back. And on his way back, the cancer got worse, and he was, at, I believe, not able to finish his run before he succumbed to the cancer. But he created so much awareness. He became a national hero as people stood up, talked about this, unified around what he was doing. It's not what we plan, but it's how we are able to adapt to the things that happen. What do you do when you have something that comes along and it's suddenly not working out the right way? How can we adapt to that situation? One of the first things you want to do is to literally evaluate the situation. This morning, when I sat down here, I was ready for two podcasts to go through. I had two of them scheduled and both people were not able to make it. No judgment. <laughs> people have busy lives. There is never any judgment for me about coming, uh, people needing to reschedule. That is just what happens with life. But I was sitting here looking at my situation. I had prepped my space. I had set up my lights. I'd got my camera ready, got my microphone out. So I evaluated the situation and said, I'm ready to record. What do I want to talk about? And by identifying the challenges in the situation, well, I didn't have a guest, but I still had something I wanted to say. So at that point in time, I was able to start gathering information about my current situation and what I could do. Let's imagine that you want to go to graduate school and you've got everything lined up. <laughs> this happened to me. I was sitting down and uh, I had been doing my master's. I finished my MBA, which I'm very proud of, uh, but that was a pivot. That was a pivot. I had been doing my master's in English and it was fun. It was great. But I realized that midway through, I didn't want to be an English teacher anymore. I didn't want to be a high school teacher. I didn't want to be a university teacher. That I wanted to do something different. I wanted to look at a different way. One of the things I wanted to look at was I wanted to learn more about money. Money was always this mysterious thing to me that I was very uncertain about and very unsure about. So I said, hey, First of all, I want to kick off a financial podcast, not where I'm a financial expert because I'm not, but a financial podcast where I interview people who are financial experts, who do have information and can share that with me. In that way, I can get information for my daughter, for, for myself and start healing that space. But I realized I didn't know enough to talk about it. So I enrolled in an MBA program. Luckily, one of my friends, Tim, I had just finished an MBA program that was entirely online with a new upstart school named Quantic School of, of, of Business and Technology. And I enrolled, got a scholarship, and had an awesome time learning these very much fundamentals of business, of money, of, of, of business principles and financial principles. When I finished that, I said, hey, well, do I want to go back and finish my master's in English? I was like, well, you know what? Tech is an area that I'm interested in. Maybe I'll look at a tech class. Started taking a class in computer programming to see what it was like. And I realized I was really bad at it and did not like it. So I pivoted again. And I found out through one of my podcast guests uh, that 
on my financial podcast that he was a professor at Texas Tech University. And so they had a master's in personal finance management. And I did more research, looked into it, and I said, you know what? This looks interesting to me. This is something that I could do that could give me a certain level of information so that as I'm building my financial podcast, I can have this information to share. I was gathering information, gathering opinions, looking at my situation, seeing where I was at, and adapting. Because sometimes we make plans, but sometimes those plans are not working. And certainly I have grit. I, I love working hard and I love sticking with things, but only if it's something that's worth our time. There's a great book called Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance by uh, Dr. Angela Duckworth. And it's amazing. It's a masterclass on grit. But one of the things she talks about is that even people who are gritty sometimes have to learn to adapt. And one of the things that you have to find is that there's something to be said for finding something that is worth your grit. What is it that you're really wanting to stick with? It's important. Now, if you're in a challenging situation and you don't know what to do and you don't know where to pivot, one of the things that's really really helpful as well is reaching out and gathering opinions from the people around you and, and finding out what they might recommend for you, what they might say would be a good idea for you to look into. When I was finishing up my MBA and I was looking at my next steps, I started talking to people around me and getting ideas about what they recommended because I wanted to continue my studies, but I wasn't sure the direction to go. My mom recommended a doctorate in psychology, and I'm still interested in that because I love learning about people. Another person said, well, why don't you try to start your own business? Why don't you do this? All of them were really interesting ideas about what I could do with my time. But at the end of the day, what I really enjoyed was building my podcasts, building this podcast, as well as my financial podcast. And so for me, these were natural progressions that I wanted to kind of continue with. That's what I dove into. But these expert opinions, the opinions of people I trusted were really helpful and kind of steering me down different paths. Now, once you get an idea of what it might be, what your new pivot might be, one of the best things to do is to set a goal. Now, a goal doesn't have to be like, I want to have this done in one year. It might be a general direction. I would like to learn more about personal finance. All right. Well, what's your purpose of that? Well, I'd like to get my finances back in order. Okay. That's a worthy objective. That is a great goal. Now, how can we create a plan to achieve that? How can we put the things in order? How can we put the pieces in order to get you to that place that you would like to be? Sometimes as well, we don't know all of the little mini goals that we are going to put into place to achieve the big goal. I've got a weird goal, <laughs> but it's interesting. I would love at some point in time in the future to have a horse. Yes, a horse. Now, why is that? <laughs> well, what it represents to me, there's no way possible that I can have a horse unless I get my financial life back in order, unless I can create a business that allows me to have enough float that I could do something like that. And there's no way that I could pull that off unless I change directions in my life. So what does the horse really represent? The horse is overall a goal of being able to have permission to take back power in my financial life. So maybe it's seeing the things that you would like. Maybe for you, you want to be able to run a mile. Maybe that's your goal. Maybe for you, the goal is to be able to learn to drive a car. Maybe your goal is to finish a graduate program. Well, one of the things I learned in acting school was that we have larger objectives in life. You know, something like to be loved, to find power. But as we go about achieving those, there's all these little micro goals and micro objectives along the way. One of the things that I really like to do when I'm making a pivot in my life is to start looking at what are the goals that I want to accomplish today. When my guest canceled, I was sitting there with a situation. I would like to, what is my overall goal? Let me think about that for a second. For me, I have a goal to spread knowledge, but that goal is tied to a larger goal. I have a goal to build this podcast and make more money, 
but that's also tied to a larger goal. One of my larger goals is to provide a better life for my family. And if I feel like I can do that, partially through this podcast of creating a safe space, helping make the world a little bit nicer, kinder, more loving of a place for my daughter through sharing of these messages that I share, well, that's pretty dang good. Also, uh, by hopefully creating something that can be monetizable, by building out this podcast to create something larger. But my larger goal is to create that safety, that safe place, to be able to create a safe place for my family. And there's all these smaller goals inside of that. So starting to make sure that you are creating a long-term, larger goal for your life, financial stability, um, emotional safety. If you're in a negative relationship where you don't feel safe, then you're going to have a larger goal of creating a safe place for yourself. What are the little goals along the way? Strategize. One of the things that you need to do is to start creating a strategy. Now, I've been playing chess with my daughter lately, and I actually love it. When I was growing up, no one wanted to play chess. Chess wasn't cool. I'm not great at chess, but I'm absolutely loving playing playing chess with my daughter. And it's super cool that she's so into it. She came to me asking me to play because the kids at her school really love chess. Now, one of the things that I love about chess is that chess can teach, can teach a really simple concept that you have a larger goal. The larger goal of any chess game is to win the game. Checkmate. Your goal is to create a situation where their king has no more options, where there is nowhere else for their king to move, at which point you win the game. However, from the point you begin the game to the very end of the game, you have a myriad, uh, you have a large number of options to chart your course from the opening move all the way to checkmate. And hopefully you win. (laughs) Sometimes you don't. But yet there are lots of paths to your goal. And at every single move, at every single point that you have moved, you have made a move and they have made a move, you are at a new point of choice, a new point of planning, a new point of strategy. And that's where if you have an overarching goal, My goal is to win this game, okay? Well, an objective might be to take that pawn, to take the knight, to take the rook, to sacrifice a piece so that they make a move. All of these are things that could be part of your long-term goals. But your strategy is what gets you there. Your strategy is what charts the path. Now, a strategy can be planning for different outcomes. Suppose that I start this new certified financial planning degree and it doesn't go the way I want. Well, I can sit there and go, you know what? These classes are not worth my time. This is not going to be something that gets me to my larger goal. I'm going to step back from this, being willing to see different scenarios playing out. Or maybe it goes great. Maybe I get to the point where that plus my podcast is something that I really need to lean into, at which point I'll try to do so. Now, if you can start looking at the different paths in front of you and start thinking about different scenarios, it allows you to create uh, plans for what might happen if that were to happen. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do is to consider risks. As I'm embarking on this new degree, one of the risks that I'm going to have are the financial costs incurred. I'm going to have to think out or think through how I will pay for this program because I will not take any more student loans. That is something that I will not do. So can I find the extra work to get through this program up to the point that I finish the program, pass my certification and start getting clients? Now, what can I do to get there? Now, again, these risks are going to pop up and whether it might be uh, I want to take a trip to Maui to visit my family this summer. That's something I actually would like to do. What are the risks of that? Well, one risk is going to be the financial cost incurred. A second risk might be that if I go there, that I won't be able to go to California to see my dad. Okay, well, what are these different risks that you're incurring? And might you create a plan that can mitigate those risks, that can downplay those risks or simply handle them? Okay. Now, once you do that, 
you're going to want to start allocating resources, starting putting things into place to make that plan achievable. If I want to go to Maui, one of the things that I want to do is start setting aside money, start saving up and saying, okay, this is what I want to do. This is the time frame I want to do it. Buy the tickets early. Set aside the money to buy the tickets and to make this all happen. Now, for me, as I'm starting to look at this graduate program in the fall that I'm starting, one of the things I'm going to start looking at are time. What is my use of time? What about my use of money? And what other resources might be needed for this program? Am I going to need a new computer? Am I going to need to network with people and maybe reach out to my professor that I had on my podcast and ask him, hey, what does this program look like? What are the, some of the things that this program entails? And preparing for it. Now, once you create this strategy, once you create this plan, it's time to start making it happen. Suppose your goal is to pay down your credit cards. Well, you've made a plan. You've set the pieces in place. Now is the time to start paying down that debt. Now is the time to start making payments. You have to make things manageable. Now, as you've broken this into small steps, you want to start phasing it in. So your first month, you're going to pay an extra $300 on your credit card. The next month, you do that again. You always want to keep everything informed. So, you know, if you're if you're doing something big, as I'm getting ready to do this graduate program, I'm talking to my wife about it and saying, V, I'm going to be undertaking this graduate program in personal finance. And I would love your support on it. I would love for my family to stand behind me as I'm trying to do this. And so that they can understand my direction. They can understand if I'm downstairs watching a, a class and I'm, I'm not able to come up and talk, they will know why. They will know what's going on with me. And, and they can be informed and understand and support. Now, as this plan is coming out, you will have to adapt. Maybe that $300 that you want to contribute towards your debt, maybe you have $400. Maybe you sit down and look, you know what, this month I actually have some, this month I actually have some extra. So you, you put that money aside and you keep working. Maybe you have less. Again, as you're implementing this plan, you have to make changes and you have to monitor and adjust. Now, maybe six months in, you look at your progress and go, you know what, I'm not where I want to be. Well, well, how can you adapt it? and start getting to where you want to be. How can you adapt and go, all right, well, what else do I need to change? What are the pieces I need to put into place to make this happen? Because if you can start thinking about that, strategizing, just like in that chess game, every move, you're sitting there, you move, and then you make a move. You make a move, and then you adapt and readjust your strategy to what the world brings you. Because <laughs> that's the reality. We can make the best plans ever. We can create all of these scenarios in our head, but then life happens. I remember my friend Trey came on my podcast and he used to tell me about um, watching the special, the special forces soldiers prepare for a mission. He said that um, he was working with the night stalkers, which was a special force helicopter um, support team. They were the guys that supported the Navy seals and all of these other military branches with these lightweight attack, lightweight attack helicopters. And he had told me that he would see these soldiers tape out on the ground, the shape of a building, and they would go through the moves a thousand times until everything was in the right place, until every move was planned, until every single thing that they could plan for, every scenario, every challenge, everything that might happen was prepared for. And what happened when the mission started? Well, they were ready for anything that came. And certainly, we can't all prepare like Navy SEALs all the time. But we can learn to adapt and learn to pivot and trust that we're able to pull that off. As I sat down this morning, <laughs> ready to have two interviews, and none of them happened, I sat down and thought about my goals and thought about my plans and my mission, my direction. And I said, hmm. All right, I've got the camera here. What else can I do? So I decided to make a video, a video where I talk to you about changing plans. And we all have different plans that we're undertaking in our lives. So whatever challenges you're facing right now, whatever obstacles are popping up in your path, I hope that you can find the skills and the inner resolve 
to adapt and make changes today. We can't plan out life perfectly, and honestly, things happen along the way. But you can learn to adapt and learn to put the pieces into place that will let you have a successful outcome with whatever you're planning, and hopefully to live an amazing and awesome life. I hope you guys all have a beautiful day, and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Uh...